We're live! We're live! We're live! Again! <laughs> okay, in fact, you need to sell PC gaming to us three. Begin your case. Okay, well, we've got a lot to get through here. Well, and he's already Make it quick, <laughs> Right, he's already failed. You know, he didn't say. Well, my good sirs, <laughs> you felt uh, yeah. them as the well, I'm I'm sorry. Sold. <laughs> God. What can you tell us about the PC2? <laughs> well, well, um, technically we've had a few generations of PC, um, but I haven't actually found something called PC2, but you do get a lot of creative names in PC, like, like the Haswell generation Okay, move on. Okay, he hasn't found the what he's looking for. No. Anyway, enough of that. On to the PC Gamer E3 Shower 2015. Sponsored by AMD, powered by PC Gamer. Official title. Is that part of the title as well? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they kicked off with a, with a game called Killing Floor 2. At the moment it's in early access. But they wanted to keep the original and not screw it up. There'll be regular updates, new features, and it will not reset your sets anymore. And when they showed the trailer, it was basically just shooting stuff and, you know. Well, yeah, with a name like Killing the Floor 2, it's like... And leaving blood all over the floor. Any questions? Do you get to kill the floor? Uh, well, if blood on the floor is killing it, then yeah. No, does the floor kill people? Does that uh, make it the killing floor? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't see any of that in the trailer. But you never know. Stop that. So, uh, and then, and then they released a, a new game, Rising Storm Two trailer. <laughs> it was just a reveal trailer. I don't have much to say about it. Um, must then must have a storm and it rolls up from the ground. Did it kill people? No. Was it about stormtroopers? No. Was it about anything <laughs> rising from the dead? I didn't actually write much about it. It's just I just put a reveal on the trailer. Okay. I can't remember oh, the, much the about the trailer itself. Oh well. The um, X-Men show. <laughs> <laughs> it's the X-Men show that that was pretty cool. But um, well, yeah, this, I think we're going to see a storm show now. Mm. Oh, was it fantastic for there? Did, what's the silver? What's the silver surfer there? The silver surfer. Yeah. What's wrong, Dark Man? Are you trying to pretend you're falling asleep here? I'm only on. I, I'm only on the second item. Um. Don't worry. Then we went on to Star Citizen. They did like a. They did like a video cast. And and they basically showed how they were doing the animations with people jumping off off ledges and. And basically sorting out the animations and saying that this game's for you because of the Kickstarter <laughs> campaign and and how it's not a big AAA title, but they've got they've got more money than some of them because of everything that went on and they hope to make a really big star exploration game. Yeah, but the, the motion capture stuff isn't really yeah. that interesting yeah. Yeah. because yeah. Um, when they did the original Prince of Persia, they did when they did the exact same thing, but they just used a home video camera to catch the people jumping off ledges. Yeah, you actually saw them using cameras as well and sorting it all out. It's, it was similar in that sense. Yeah, so it's and then they put it into the animations, yeah, so into the, the game itself. Yeah, so it's exactly the same thing they did nearly 30 years ago for Prince of, the very first Prince of Persia game. Yeah. So nothing new then. Yeah, so nothing really new. They said it's financed by you, so we're making it for you, that kind of thing. Well, it's Kickstarter, that's how Kickstarter yes. kind of works. Give us your money, we made you nothing. Blah. And yet, it's sad to say that a few companies have done that. I know. I've been working up the goal to do it, actually. I'm going to call it the nothing. Uh, I'm on £5, and I will give you nothing for that £5. Yeah, as long as you're up front about it, I don't think people can complain. Brilliant idea. What's next? The Chief Gaming Scientist of AMD came around. <laughs> came on. Um... And he was asked, what does the Chief Game Scientist of AMD do? And he said... And he said, it's it's like a public relations role. So his job basically is to explain to companies and stuff what's, what's going on, the new tech, the hardware, how to use it, blah-de-da-de-da. All that kind of stuff. 
Hold that jazz. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then and then he tried to give an, an explanation on what virtual reality is and how graphics cards um, should try and gear up for it and how basically they need a one one ninetieth of a second um, delay rate for it to work. Um, new range of graphics card plug because AMD just released some new graphics cards that day. Any interesting names for their graphics cards? Uh, Fuji. I've got one of them in my bedroom. Nice, nice camera. Yeah. Um, um, nothing like the Jaguars and Bobcats that we had last uh, last time we talked about this sort of stuff. Any any information on the Rams? Have they been have they been killed by the Jaguars yet? I don't have all these compelling information. And um, not this time. And then. And then the most interesting one that he said, which interested me, was a DirectX 12 explanation. He described it as, at the moment, you have you have four processors, but only two processors are doing the work. One processor is yelling at the other processor, have you processed that yet? And the other processor, give me some time. Meanwhile, the others are just having a cup of coffee and can't do anything. Mm, sounds like general office work. And, and what... I know, and basically what... Well, what he's saying is when DirectX 12 comes, it'll eliminate that. So all the processes will be being used to process information. So so it should make for better better frame rates and smoother gameplay and allow allow for more effects and tessellation and all this stuff that they do oh, yeah. w- w- without without being bottlenecked. I thought that was an interesting explanation. It probably is. No, back. back to those RAMs. Uh, no, sorry. We have to skip to the future for DSX. Oh, Mankind. Mankind divided. Um, they had this at Sony's. Or yeah. Was it Squares? Uh, it was at Squares. Yeah. So, so instead of um, just going through it all, um, what they were doing was they were actually showing the trailer again, but with the with the extra graphical um, thing of the PC and showing how they use any effects. Wonderful explanation. Graphical thingy. Yeah, probably um, graphical enhancements. Yeah, g- graphical enhancements, and they were showing basically how how using the PC's graphical effects, how how they can make like st- like pictures sharper and the game a bit more, you know, looking a bit more nicer. And they were um, augmenting the textures. Yeah. Through revolutions of texture. Mapping, yes. bit mapping. Yeah, and they'll they'll basically just showing off that kind and of thing. And draw mapping. So yeah. So uh, so that's the only thing really to add to that based on what we've already said. And um, pen on paper mapping. No, not anymore. Then the, the, then we come to total war. War hammer. Yes. What um, is it good for? Hammers. But but they started off with a short history of Total War. Here's a video for 15 years of the celebration of Total War. I've actually played the original Rum Total War. Look, we haven't got we haven't got all day for you to talk about the history of war, starting with the beginning. No, I've only played the one. So, uh, so I'm only uh, going by my own. No, here's how we uh, amplify it all, right? War. What is it good for? Capitalism, money, and bullets. Oh yeah! There we go. Yeah. Simplify it all down. Yeah. Now we can move on. Yeah, and then they and then they moved on to this new game, which is the Warhammer in a total war setting. Ooh. So lots of people sitting around big tables with little plastic figures. And it brings the figures to life with all the magical stuff that Warhammer brings. The magical stuff. Yeah, like Warhammer. like the dragons and the you know the fans like the fantasy. Then they said it's the first time they've actually been able to go into it because it's normally based on history rather than a, fans, a fantasy kind of world, and that's how they're the evolving um. the Total War franchise in in that particular game. Okay. Then Phil Spencer came on, and twice away. Welcome to the PC Gamer Show. Did I say welcome to the PC Gamer Show? Awesome. Yeah, so, you know, they picked on him slightly. Um, but basically, um, all Phil Spencer had to say was Microsoft lost its waves with PCs, 
and since he's actually the boss of Windows Gaming, he wants to put things right. So the reason why Windows Windows 10, one version of Windows, make it easier for developers. But he did say that some games exist on a television, some games exist on a on like a PC keyboard and mouse. But hoping that with the DirectX 10 and the one operating system will make it easier. And DirectX 10, DirectX 12. 12. Yeah, <coughs> DirectX 10 doesn't exist. No. Well, it's going to be DirectX 10 when on Windows 12. You see. You know. Yeah, uh, and Windows 10, you know, some things like that. Generally, that's all he had to say. And then he, then he brought on three, three people from the Xbox Game Studios to say that the game's coming out on PC. They're Killer Instinct. Wow. There's Fable Legends. Yay! Uh, uh, Gigantic. Ooh. And Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Yeah. And because we've discussed them, um, there's only there isn't really much more to say. Um, that that was that was any different. Moving on, unless oh. anyone's got any more questions. I do not, Sonny. No, any questions? No. No. Shall I just move on then? Yes. Oh, all I'm going to say is that the, the Gears of War Ultimate Edition for PC only is going to get 4K support. Mm. And it's going to have extra maps and it's built from the ground up. That's what they told us about that. So Thank a little bit more information. Thank you for that, Sonny. Um, Hasn't been that long. Then, then your truck simulator is bringing out American truck simulator. Ooh. Would it be your truck simulator in American um, cities and places? Yeah, and guess how they made it? Um, the same way that they are all similar. They use Google Maps. Ooh, yay. Thank you for such a wonderful little story. I'm glad. I'm glad you feel that way, Gary. Any questions? Or can I move on? Um, how many trucks do you have? Uh, they didn't announce that. But they're not. It, it was only it was only a quick reveal trailer to say, look, we're making this game. You can drive trucks around American roads. How much of America is it? Will I get, get be able to go to my uh, to see my friend uh, Ernie Old Fox Hall? <laughs> <laughs> um, is it the Americas, as in what people know as America, or is it the um, continent America? And if it's the continent of America, but it also include Canada. I'm a Mexico young man. I don't forget Mexico. I don't know anybody from Mexico, but I know Robin Shabowski is from Canada, so I kind of care. But you won't be able to see her, because, well, Robin Shabowski does not exist, young man. I saw it on the telly. <laughs> yeah. The, the, I trust might exist, but yeah. the character does not. Well, to be fair, they didn't have much to say about that. They were just announcing it. <coughs> in Americas, you might be able to go south as well, beyond uh, Mexico, you man. Ooh, why you, why you old man batty? Because, you know... It you go old, listen to this. <laughs> After a lot of that, just think about how long a, a parent took him to get all these knots. How long did it take you, young man? Uh, about... about Five hours to to yeah. to, to, to what? So first? how long do you think uh, it's going to take him to read it all out? And not that long, actually. With all involved, actually, <laughs> you're making you're making it longer. <laughs> that's, <laughs> to why be fair. that's why I'm saying with all involved. How long do you think it's going to take? Well, uh, well, back in my day, he didn't have any virtual reality. <laughs> my day too. He did. Mm. It was um. called going outside and having a look. No, it was called the Virtual Boy. It kind of failed. Hmm. Well, they're, they're having another go with Eve Val- Valkyria. Eve Valkyrie. Eve Valkyrie. Which Valkyria. Is- I, uh, I used to know a lot of that name. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the muffin. Basically, but- Basically, they were showing off virtual reality. So the actual guy who was hosting the thing. You know what virtual reality is, young man. Well, they put a headset on and everything just really looks all cool and it gives people headaches. Apparently, but you give people headaches. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good training for you if you ever get a virtual reality headset, then, isn't it? 
Do you know what this means, you man? He sets you up, you knock it down. <laughs> <laughs> what, what details do you have for Eve Valkyrie? Well, we've watched a demo of the presenter using virtual reality headset on a on this game. Right. And Does it have anything to do with Valkyries? <laughs> well, it was a space shooter mop. So no Valkyries then? I didn't see any. That's a bit disappointing. Yeah. Do you even know what Valkyries are? No. So how do I actually know what are Valkyries? Valkyries are Norse women who fight alongside Thor and they normally ride on Pegasus size. Pegasus size. They're in Yu-Gi-Oh. Basically, they're, they're like a, just a borrowed worse of Norse mythology. Young man. Thank you, Odin. Right. Well. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the Odin. <coughs> the Odin sleep. Is that, is that just the time when we don't yeah. hear those random rumbling? Yeah, just go to sleep, Odin. Go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, the effect of what we've got next. Well, basically, we watched the demo of this VR. And it basically just showed, you know, in 3D. So, when you go like that, you look up. Look down, left, right, kind of thing, and you just saw him like trying well, to shoot. Like, um, and like, oh, it was like um, looking, oh, it was oh, looking in the cockpit. People can see that, <laughs> can't they? So, so, so generally, that's what they were showing and saying that that the game was built for virtual reality from the start. So there was no like transformations in that game. Awesome. Um, can you invert the virtual reality world so you know that? So look it up, <laughs> make it look down and down, and make it look up and left and right. I'm so confused. <laughs> that would be interesting. Shall I make an this crazy thing? I think I think they could probably put that option in if you really wanted to. <laughs> but but you'll have to ask the developers that because I didn't I didn't know any I didn't see anything like that. Okay, is that fair enough? Are they gonna make a bleach game? I just think it'd be really cool. I think there'll be a clean uh, simulator at some point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be wonderful. Okay. When you start making fighting noises, you make it hard for people to hear the other people talking. Right, okay. Um, the next the next guest was the person who made the DSC, introducing his new game, Ion. We discussed that a minute ago on Microsoft. Yes. Early access explanation um, also came with this because because DC was in early access for so long. Um, yeah, it's actually I'll I'll come I'll come back to that one later. Um, but Why? Thing, what? Why? He's got an old one, young man. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll come back to that one later. But but the early access explanation. Um, he was saying that actually he messed up. Because it became too popular too quickly, and he and he and he lost his goal to where the game was going. So, so so he explained why having the roadmap is actually important, so that so that the people who are actually looking at the early access know what know what stage they're at, rather than actually just whatever happens happens. Yes, but um, it can't help you in one way. Decide between the fountain of youth. A faulting on bacon. Okay. Um, <laughs> basically, Ion is about space stations, not planets. He said it's not like Star Citizen. It's not like, you know, yeah, uh, it's not bad. like other games. He, he tried to make that clear. Um, mm. As I always said, this was an accident. Um, he did not expect it to become so popular so quickly. And he was asked about Iron's best bug. Apparently, clicking on another player made all the org- made all the organs fall out. These character models have organs. Yes, and apparently it's down to the engine and what they can do with it, and how and who he teamed up with, and all this stuff. So yeah, that's very interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Or shall I move on? So when's uh, yeah. Where's yeah. your skull went? <laughs> no. Um, were these um, the traditional 
internal organs are with tiny little pianos flying out of people when you clicked on them. Like, no, apparently it was all the actual organs inside, like everything just fell out of your body. Yeah, but what's happened to organs? So, like your uh, kidney, I don't your think you heart, your hands. <laughs> he's, um, he's not asking about that. Your tongues. He's not asking about that. Yeah, he's, everything just fell out. Hold on, hold on. He's asking, is it actual actual physical organs, based on physical organs, or is it based on... It's the, based on physical organs. So not musical instruments then? Not musical instrument style organs then. No, not musical instrument That's what you're asking style. about, young man. Also, the tongue's a muscle, not an organ. Yeah. No, but it was just saying, basically your whole body just... Dropped like your ass. Yeah. He's so <coughs> really <shit coughs> job, clearly. What's next, mister? Strife. You mean strafe? Strafe. Strafe, strafe. Yeah, he is not different. Basically, <laughs> basically, uh, it was a live demo. Yes. Was that one of those dead demos? Yeah, so so, so they literally played it um, from the PC onto the big screen. Yeah. Rather yeah. than... Dead demo is bomb like you're dead whilst you played it. It is. Yeah. Um... Apparently, it's procedural generated in handcrafted rooms in a doing quake style, like the old kind yeah, of. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. And apparently, when your gun runs out of bullets, you just throw them. What the bullets? No, you just throw the gun, no, and then you, you go don't back throw to your. All your and, bullets. But you but, don't people in so much. But you go back to your default weapon. Your fists. No, you, you, you get to choose one weapon to use. Um, I think one was like a shotgun, one was like a, a machine gun, and another one was like, oh, I can't remember, hit with something else. Awesome. Like, three standard weapons. You pick up stuff in, in the game as you shoot in, and you can use them. Um, and and apparently some, some enemies, when they, when they die, they actually drop acid on the floor, and if you walk, if you walk over it, you could die. I lose health as well. That's how acid normally works in these games. Yep. Yeah. Um, basically, th- this is what they said. You go in, you shoot stuff, you die, and you start again. Wow. And and they used and they used a really good word: procedurally generated. That you mean like um, No Man's Sky? That's procedurally generated. Yeah. I'll tell you what's also good. Another good word. Good. It's literally good. Good observation, Grandpa. Good observation, well done. Thank you. You're welcome. What's next, old man? Pillars of Eternity, White March, new expansion. Hmm. So, I guess in Pillars of Eternity is already out then? Yeah, Pillars of Eternity is out, White March is the expansion. Yeah. Is the expansion. I, I've been to the top of that one, you know. Really? You've been to the top of the Pillar of Eternity? Yes. What was it like? It took too long. <laughs> it was long to get out there, but that was an interesting view. Okay. I could see Pluto from there. <laughs> a the dog, <laughs> not, uh, not a dog. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you meant that. Anyway, this is an RPG. Really? Uh, it's working with Paradox, because they've been getting their name around a lot lately. Yeah, it's yeah. not careful, they might create a Paradox. Oh, and there's extra classes. Like what? I don't know. I was like, I didn't really write much for this. Like um, PE, geography, uh, maths, maths, science. Um, any Harry. any any things like rogue, thief, scholar. Yeah, probably pirate. Monkey. S- yep, why not? Space commander. Mm. You have no idea, do you? I actually don't know. All I know is there were the extra classes. They didn't really say much. They just said it was kind of what about lion? coming out. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. So, yeah. So, sorry, I didn't have much about that. Go on then. What's next? Planet Coaster. Is, but, that, um, is that a game where you make a really big coaster and you put planets on it? Like a I like coaster. coasters. Keeps the temple from getting rings on it. It does that indeed, sir. It's by the Elite Dangerous developers and mm. it's inspired by roller coaster tycoon well they're making coasters yeah. in a game yeah it's like coaster simulator 
Is it? Is it as good as or worse than Rock Simulator? Better than. How dare well, you? It is the worst game in the universe. Well, well, <laughs> well like I said, the, the the actual trailer started off with this little guy in the middle of nowhere, starts training, runs towards a tree, and then all of a sudden this kind of roller coaster just kind of gets built up a little with some, you know, mascots and stuff like that. I think they were riding a bit more of a theme park style, but I think they're just focusing on roller coasters. So so that's basically how the trailer worked. Yeah. Was there any actual gameplay there, young man? No, there wasn't. There wasn't a gameplay trailer for this. Oh, it that's was, a shame. Yeah, it was just a... Free-rendered free yeah, trailer. Yeah. But, like I said, it's a, this is kind of how it's going to look like. Well... Um, Gold Wars 2. Heart of Thorns. New expansion. New expansion. Yes. It's an MMO, you know. Yes. So I came out as a young man, you know. So they do. You came out as a young man as well. Uh, I know I did. But I'm going to leave as an old man now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We'll, we'll find a way to remain time. Okay. Just not too far, right? I don't think I could handle that. Okay. Well, basically, they, they, they showed off a particular feature of this new expansion, which is called the Guild Hall feature for social interaction. And it was a world exclusive trailer. Ooh. So, that of exciting, eh? so they said, you create your hall. Mm. You brawl in your arena. You adventure together. And then they told you how to um, get this hall. You've got to fight your way in, take it over, then build a guild team. You can you can use a guild portal and customization. You can build a workshop and you can make items for everyone in your guild. And you can build a war room. Yay. Any questions? Uh no, I think I'm pretty good actually. Any questions that I can make for? No. Any new classes? Um they didn't really say yeah, much that's, about that's a good that's a good question. A new glasses for Dark and Viper. Hey. <laughs> Stop making a spectacle of yourself, Grandpa. Uh, like, like I said, they were just generally focusing on like a pair of just, just the new, right you. just get, j- just the guild hall and how how you have to kind of fight to take it over, and then once you've got it, you can recreate it. They weren't really talking about classes or let's say the adventure of the gameplay and stuff like that. Oh, well. what's next? Hitman. I know I put was swearing next. They didn't really say anything new. So no. basically, what we've already covered, you know, the whole sandbox, open, open world kind yeah, of thing. Sl- Shall we move on now? Just kill people. Yep. Yeah. Um, then the CAO of AMD, Lisa Sue, came out. CAO. Yeah, the the CEO. The company. Oh, CEO. Yeah. Not C E C A O. Right. CEO. Um, and she was talking about the Radeon R9 Fury X for 4K gaming. A big graphics Radeon. card. Ah. Ah. Then she talked about the Radeon R9 Nano, a small card for 4K gaming. Can I use both of them together? Can I put the Nano inside? No, you can't have a 12K gaming. Why not? And then a dual Fuji GPU card was announced for the first time at this show. Which is basically a dual card. So it's like it's like two processors in one card, in a single card. With and I think it said it had like twelve gigabyte of memory or something like that. Oh, really makes sense. What have you got? Armor three. Tanio, new, new Pacific theme terrain. Ooh. So this is mainly all about the terrain, this whole section. So, so, so they talked about the fact that it was a new expansion for a new terrain, built yeah. for modders to expand and be creative. One hundred square kilometers of terrain and DirectX twelve. Just throw that in there. Um, generally, what the what type of terrain is it? 
Terrain. What type of terrain is it? Uh, it's like a grassy terrain, like an island. Okay. Uh, like quite green. Apparently, apparently, um, there's gonna be like new new war mechanics in this, and you know, like different different <coughs> ways of playing, using it as well, mm-hmm. and like a new enemy on the island. Is it something new enemy is gonna be? No. Okay. It's and, gonna be the Russians. Um, but 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 they said that this they even said like they think that some modders somewhere will put dinosaurs into it and you know and it's all designed mainly for people to mess around. See it what is, they can do. Gonna, they're gonna have Nazis as well. And they're getting greedy by putting in dinosaurs in there. Well they didn't actually put dinosaurs in. They're saying that modders might put dinosaurs in. Nazi dinosaurs. Well, we've had Nazi zombies, we've had, like, Nazi machines, so why not? Nazi zombie with ice breath. Zombie dinosaurs with ice breath. Nazi zombie dinosaurs with fire breath. Not ice breath. How about ice and fire? Yeah, why not? At at the same time, you man. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, and and they also showed the airport. Ooh, of the game with welcome to Lost World. That's that Ten on so yes, um, generally, so so they just announced that expansion really. Awesome. Um, Beyond Eyes. Again. Yeah, built as an exploration. Try to try to use different senses. Nice art style. Yeah, we, we've got beyond nice style. down. We're pretty good on. Then, then a new game, Dirty Bomb. You should clean that bomb first before you use it. Yeah, uh, it looks like a first-person shooter. Um, but the actual company's called Splash Damage. Now they've worked on Wolfenstein and lots of other, t- you know kind of titles by other people so this is the first one that they actually own uh. so um, and the actual trailer that they showed for it was like we're mercenaries we don't we don't kill for anything but money that's how mercenaries are working on you know yes but they they made it absolutely clear um, there were some like s- skills involved I I kind of described it as a Borderlands and Grand Theft Auto kind of inspired. Yeah. Because of the kind of skills and the kind of shooting style and the fact it seems to be like co-op and multiplayer kind of thing. Did they go into detail about the skills? Did they have a particular set of skills? Um, not really, no. Are they, they going to hunt you down? No, but... Are they going to find you? They, they, Will they, they kill you? They... Yeah, I kind of think they, they did actually show, show show a brief a briefing of each character's character skills. Was it Bulma? <laughs> when did Dragon Ball Z come into this? Don't know. But carry on. Yeah, so that was a, that was interesting. Uh, Takome again. Yeah. First person explanation game of Space Station's walking simulator. Basically, and then and then they went. They they talked about five minutes about the exploration ideas and how they can basically go go anywhere on the space station, and you can kind of go where you want and explore. But they try and tell you if you finished over here, there might be something over here you're interested in. But if you want to, you can go over there. That's yeah. how they kind of described it. So they didn't, they didn't describe it as bad fucking space then. What? They didn't describe it as bad fucking space. No, because there doesn't seem to be any enemies or anything. It's generally like space, 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 space. So it's like so it's like dead space, but more dead. dead. No, more like dead space. space. But apparently, yeah. But apparently, but apparently, (laughs) six people live on the space station or something. Oh, good for them. And they tried to imagine what it was like living on a space station and the kind of things that you'd. Uh, try and explore and create and learn about yeah by the sounds of things it, it sounds interesting it does um, and then we come to the horror genre uh, so Tacoma isn't part of the horror genre 
No. But no, no. but but summer is. Summer. Is it an abbreviation or something else? It's it's under the sea. It's a new horror game. So basically they said they wanted no, to take I have under the sea, I know. Yeah. I know, I know. Atlantis. Yes. Yeah, but basically, uh, the, the what what they're trying to do with Samba is um, take her into a new direction. So generally, asking questions. They're going west instead of east. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're going south instead. Instead well, of north. this new direction they're going in. The the new direction is to try and is to try and ask questions. Rather than just like jump scares or anything like that, so so it's like to ask questions about life, ask questions about things, and apparently it's it's designed to make you mentally think about things, so you kind of get scared rather than just yeah. jump scare. Yeah, cause I've had I've had enough of this physical thinking. I'm gonna start using my brain for my thinking stuff. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah. But like I said, how it's going to play out? Uh, all, all you heard in the trailer is like, "Don't look! Don't look at this! Don't look at this!" But you don't actually get to see what they're not to look at. So technically, they didn't look at it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's interesting. How are we doing? Wonderful. Carry on. Okay. I said I'll come back to this. So I'm back to it. Dizzy. Whoa. Um, there's going to be some new features. Are there any zombies? Um, yeah, I think they're adding other players. Well, <laughs> how about this one? It will be going into beta soon. It will be coming out of early access. Well, because I don't believe you, young man. Because because a new um. Because a new company is taking it over because they sold it to Bohemia Interactive, who who are now going to develop the game. Alright. Um and there's gonna be a single player DC option. Well. So if the internet builds you can still play. <laughs> <coughs> it's gonna add Steam Workshop support. <laughs> It will be able to host your own DC server. Fantastic. And basically when it goes into beta, the game engine will be changing too. Oh, brilliant. Will it be changing to Thomas? That's what you meant, wasn't it? Yeah, we can't kill my childhood, so thanks. I just killed your childhood? Yeah. Sorry, I just killed mine as well. You masochist. I know, I'm a mass murderer. Anything else about Daisy? Not really, but I just thought of the fact that it was going into beta and was going to basically um, have a single player okay. side of it. Right. It didn't require the internet, was quite interesting. Yeah. What's next, mister? Take on Mars. Um, okay, so is that um, Take on the Corporation Mars in a big legal battle? Take on a single Mars bar in a hand to hand combat fight? Or take on the planet itself? In a giant game of conquerors where someone uses Mars as a conquer and you use another big planet as a conquer and you just smack it around. Or take on Mars in a giant sumo wrestling match. Come on, Mars, let's get it on. <laughs> or just beat Mars and take Gisser Renders. Uh, right, well, it's a Sim style space explanation game. Why are you being so silly, young man? Yeah, Gareth, behave. Yeah. Sorry, Defector. Well, it's kind of defective there. I mean, he he works for the people making Take on Mars. No, I guess not. Apparently, this Gareth is out of the world. A uh, multiplayer survival mode and a dynamic destruction. Um, I can don't... can you use the dynamic destruction against the multi against the multiplayer people? Um, I don't know, but I guess so. How much of the scenery can you dynamically destroy? In a dynamic fashion, zero. <laughs> Hello? 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 That was an accident, sorry. 
Can I use yeah. my dynamic kick? I don't use my mat punch. Mega punch. Mega kick. <laughs> Dynamics uh, is super hyper climbing punch attack. What's next? What's next? What's next? Oh, it's Gossip Gang. Project it's Blue Streak. That was a film, that wasn't it? Blue Streak. Well, I called it a sci fi a sci fi first person shooter. These kids and the kids these days and a new like, new fangle dangle to get yeah, sci fi things. And it's and it's basically trying to hit the medium and graphics, so it's trying not to be too dark and it's trying not to be too light. The medium graphics. Yeah. So 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 basically in, in the trailer, um they, they, they say that like like they said like two different franchises that were first person oh. shooters and they said how one had a very dark look and one had a very light look and yeah. they went well we're trying not to be that or that we're just trying to be our own kind of shooter uh. um, and that's generally all I got from, from that okay um, enter the gungeon is it a gungeon full of guns it's a 2D platform a dungeon design has a dodge roll. Do a dodge roll. Um, they actually they actually showed this one as a um, like when they were playing it. So 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 they showed it in multiplayer. Oh yeah. And they actually gave the presenter who was playing it as well, God mode, because they thought he was just gonna die. Did he die? No, they gave him God mode, so he couldn't die. Uh. You know, he still die? No. Oh. But he did get shot a few times. Because apparently it's designed like it's designed like that that souls but in a 2D part of my kind of way. Um, and one of the bosses was actually in that um, their version of a Legend of Zelda fight. Well, which one? A uh, Link to the Past. It's like four pillars. I've got father on my bed, you know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so yeah, um it look it looked like an interesting game. So, so something I actually might be interested in if if other people get. Oh, yeah. Um but they said they did say that they've got two hundred hands on weapons which unlock on different run throughs. Ooh. So it's designed for multiple run throughs. Run throughs. Yeah. They said that you would probably die, but they tried to give you the tools to combat each situation. So the idea is it's how you use them. As I said, if a game's too easy, it doesn't feel like you've actually won. That's what they said about that. Okay, that was an interesting one. Yeah. Diablo, Diablo Three: Heroes of the Storm Eternal Conflict, new new expansion. I said I put them in Diablo 3 because they kept mentioning we got this from Diablo 3 we got that from Diablo 3 basically it was the same company as, Di- as Diablo it's by Blizzard oh so so yeah. is, is that a really long name for a new Diablo 3 expansion or is it an expansion for Heroes of the Storm it's an expansion for Heroes of the Storm but I put in Diablo 3 because they said it that many times about about how many things they brought in from Diablo 3 to the new expansion. Okay, I, I, I got confused then. Yeah, sorry about that, that was my fault for my um, for my explaining. We're, we're on the same page now. Okay. So, so they show the trailer. A new arena. Mm. It's, got, it's got features as well. What type of features have you got? Um, I just put features. I noticed. I, uh, I didn't quite... I, I, I didn't quite get what they were talking about probably because I never probably because I didn't I, I've never actually played the game oh well but but the um, two things I I did notice was two new heroes King King Loic and Monk and they went into quite a lot of detail particularly in King Loic King Loic is apparently a boss in Diablo 3 that you can now play in Heroes of the Storm uh. and he's a bit of a tough guy so he just goes around smashes loads of enemies around and just kills them yeah what I think I think what you might call a tank. <coughs> no tanks is normally just oh yeah, I guess tanks will be yeah. that as well. Yeah, and apparently when when he hits people he heals himself. 
that's pretty good. But and and they also showed another one where he cornered one mm. in a little corner and it just started smacking this person. Oh, okay. Um, and the other one is a monk. Uh, monk is apparently it could be used as a fast healer. They said mm. they haven't got a healer yet, so so they decided, but. But if you wanted to use him for damage rather than healing, you can do as well. Okay. So you can you can take the monk one way or the other. But they didn't say much about the monk. Because it's still an early development. Yeah. Uh, any questions? No. Done. No. no. Almost. We're getting there. Still keeping with Blizzard. Starcraft 2. Legacy of the Void is going to be the end of the story. I noticed I noticed a little pattern here. And this was on Oblivion. Yeah, and apparently that's a prequel leading to um, Legacy of the Void. Uh, but there's more details coming next month. Awesome. And finally, the final guest uh, was, was No Man's Sky. That's a person's name. Hello. From Hello Games. I didn't actually get all the people's names because, you know, I didn't want this to last forever and ever and ever. But I think he's having a dig at you there. Possibly. Uh, basically, No Man's Sky is coming out on the PC as at the same time as the PS4. Will there be dinosaurs? Yeah, they've already revealed that one. How about dragons? I don't know about dragons, it's procedurally regenerated, so they don't know what's on every world. Penguins. They should do. They put it there. No. It, it, with an recording to be able to spawn. And. That was a very clever album, it, It's all randomly generated. It's like yeah, procedurally. But, but in order for procedurally generated stuff to work, it needs predefined stuff that you can generate. Yes, true. Then, then, it, produ- it, then it says, right, okay, this stuff can be generated here. But this can be generated here on another playthrough. Yeah, but they did actually say how many people were making this game. Ten. Ten people. So, yeah, a good portion of that of people should know what's actually there. Oh, yeah. No, they keep saying we don't know what's out there. Yes, because they keep sending out drones, and but on what these drones are doing, this was also the PC game one. What these drones are doing is they're actually going out and then coming back and feeding information. So that's how they're trying to keep track of how the game's going. What a lot of cobbler's eyes. Drones. Yeah, they said drones. No, because they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't have any access or backdoor way to look at the data files and decode what's out there. No, they don't send drones out into the, into the game world because they're now players. Oh, well, the game doesn't break at any point. They won't be able to fix it. That's in the drone out and hope they find and hope the drone finds the fault in the vast universe of No Man's Sky. Or it'll just be broken forever. Yeah, we'll see. No Man's Sky's broke. Yeah, we sent some drones out to fix it, don't we? Yeah. Five years later, still broke. Um drones got eaten by a dense space and bits by a dense space shaft yeah, we didn't know existed out there. Well, yeah, so there you go. That's um and that ends the PC Gamer first year at E3. Well, that's exciting stuff. Do you think they should have gone for randomly generated instead of procedurally generated? Hmm, that, that's an interesting one. But procedurally generated seems to be growing around quite a lot these days. I know. So, what is the difference between procedurally and random? I don't know. That's a good question. That's probably a very detailed expression, but I don't know. Do you think they'll proceed to generate a five a no a five headed cuttlefish with twenty tentacles to shoot leprechauns out of its eyes with bags of gold and first lucky charms, blindly stones and probably floods at people? Do you think that's a possibility? If there's any code in, in there that might say you that has something along those lines, then yes. So there could be a ten hump camel that squirts chocolate milk at you. Well, mothers, have you got any ideas? <laughs> Don't go to mothers for help, you know, young man. 
They're not the up to every single one. True. But it's worth a try. So, did you enjoy watching the PC Gamer Awards? So, did you enjoy watching the PC Gamer at E3? Yes. It was very different. It was... Uh, th- there's a lot of information and... Maybe sometimes too much or, or information that was, you know, not useful. But but I like the idea that they tried to do something different. Um, do you think your PC will have the capacity to play all these games? Yes. How many of these games do you think you might be buying? Um, maybe one or two, but not many of them. Okay. Because... Because... Um, because even though even though there was a lot a lot here, um, I, I kind of I kind of think that the very very broad broad thing. So I don't think like everybody will be buying any game, but I think something would appeal to someone. That does make sense. I mean, it's not like it's all one one style of game, and I think I think that's the one thing that. They've done quite well on this. That is very true. It's very, very true. You might add anything, old man. Yes. I'm an old man. <laughs> I don't really think at all. You might add anything, darker Viper. Wake up. <laughs> hey? Wake up. It's, it's finished now, darker Viper. You can wake up. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to add, Jinzo? Um, yes, I am an old man. <laughs> Thank you, old man. <laughs> Is there any launch window for the PC too? Um, no, there isn't. Are the are PC two is not even mentioned. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, damn it. Are you high? But. No. Would you like me to try and get in touch with a company and maybe see if we can launch a PC2 for you? Uh, no, it's okay. Okay, no problem. I think we're done. Okay then. Unless you've got something to say? Nope. I think I've I, I think I've said enough to buy you further there. But I hope But I hope if you have actually lasted this long, thank you for listening. And good night. He's saying that. But he's forgetting one thing. I've now got to edit this ten hours down to an hour. Seriously, he's drawn on for ten hours. No, I haven't. He's right, he's twenty. Yeah, that's why I was asleep most of the time. <laughs> we, we started at 2am this morning, it's now quarter to ten in the evening. On and on. You should, you should hear this. That's all his paperwork. 500 pages of A4 paper. Try three pages of A4 paper. He's right, 3,000 pages of A4 paper. One. Three million. 75 million and one. Because it's a good number. <laughs> and it's over 9,000. And look who's basically <laughs> extending this. You. You fool. <laughs> Boom. A penny you fool. Yes. Yes. Um, it sounds like this was a good cut off point. It does, doesn't it? Right, announcement, we've got an announcement to make. At some point, before next E3, we will be posting a EA and Ubisoft podcast for E3 2015. We hope. Not step pending. Release not guaranteed. <laughs> At least before next year's E3 not guaranteed. Release not guaranteed ever. Like last year's E3. We did it with something in the year for last year, didn't we? No. Did we not? No, we didn't. I thought we did. The year before that we did it. <laughs> well, we did one last year, I'm sure of it. No, only three companies, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, and that's it. How how time flies. We must have slept through last year. So it might happen, it might not. Flip the coin. How about this one? If you want it, tell us you want it. 
If you want, if you want, if you want a PC gaming podcast, tell us now. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> um, if you'd like to support the Bandit Inquisition, you can um, not do that because you don't have a Kickstarter or a Patreon. Well, it would be very nice if you subscribe somehow. Yeah, please subscribe. If we haven't bored you enough yet, you can press the subscribe button down there somewhere. Up there, up there, there, there. Just subscribe. On my face. Stop. You know how it's gonna be there, but it'll be there. Anyway, I'm gonna say good night. Okay, good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye.